Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to solve uh, some variations on absolute values. And that's what do you do when you have two absolute value signs in the same equation. We'll just talk about the rationale behind that. Okay, so let's get right into this one. So, reading this in English, it says the absolute value of 3a minus 1 is equal to the absolute value of 2a plus 4. So, remember how we normally solve these. You normally solve it like this. The absolute value of something, it can be an equation or a letter, is equal to the positive and the negative cases of whatever is on this side, right? So essentially, this is what we have here. We have the absolute value of 3a minus 1 is absolute value of is equal to the positive case of this. So we'll say plus the 2a plus 4, which doesn't change this, or it's equal to the absolute value of 3a minus 1 is equal to the negative case of 2a plus 4. You know what, actually I should not have put those guys in absolute values because we went ahead and took them out by changing them into the positive and negative case, right? So let's just go ahead and clean that out. There we go. So this is what we did. We went up there and did that. Okay, the positive and the negative cases. And then you could just go ahead and solve these individually. But what if we went ahead and flipped these sideways, right? What if I said 2a plus 4, the absolute value of that, is equal to the positive and negative case of this? 3a plus 1, minus 1. Well, then I would do this. I would say the positive case is 2a plus 4 is equal to the positive case or 2a plus 4 is equal to the negative case. Now, I just showed you basically all four of these uh, possibilities, right? Now, why can I flip these around? That's something called the reflexive property. Of equality. So, for example, if you know a is equal to b, that means that b is equal to a. It's the exact same thing. Now, let me show you something. Actually, it's going to end up that two of these are going to be exactly the same. So, let me show you. So, I broke it up in my positive and negative case here. So, let's go ahead and solve this. I, I get step two, 3a minus 1 is equal to 2a plus 4. Let's start solving that. Let's subtract 2a. Let's add 1. That gives me a is equal to 5. Okay? Let's do this one. So second step, 3a minus 1 is equal to, let's distribute that negative. Let's go ahead and add that over here. Let's add that over here, the 1 over to here, and you get negative 3. a is equal to a negative 3 fifths. Okay? And that's what we have so far. Let's go down here and solve when we flipped it, we did the positive and negative case, and let's see what we get down here. All right. Well, 2a plus 4 is equal to 3a minus 1. That's the same thing up here. 2a plus 4 is equal to 3a minus 1. So this one and this one turn out to be exactly the same. You should get a is equal to 5. And let's see if that's true. Let's go ahead and subtract that. You get a. Let's add that. Sure enough, 5 is equal to a, or a is equal to 5. You don't have to redo this one, okay? How about this one over here? Let's just go 2a plus 4. Let's distribute the negative. All right, and let's go ahead and solve it. Let's add 3a to this side. Let's subtract 4 from this side, and look what you get. a is equal to a negative. Three fifths. In other words, you get the exact same thing as what's up here. So, what's the purpose of me showing you how all the possibilities and actually turns out that they're duplicates? When you have double absolute values, you really only have to pick either this side as your absolute value and then you just do the positive and negative case over here, or you can flip it around 
and make this side the absolute value and this side the positive and negative case. And then once you get your answers, of course, go back and check them. I won't do that for you in this one, but I'll get you let you guys do that. And remember, it's called the reflexive property that enables me to do this back and forth like that. Okay? I hope that was helpful for you.